cut it off before the crash. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> Actually, stick around long enough, there'd be something for real breaking. Yeah. You know? But anyway, we're back with Manny Diaz, consumer and... Uh, I would say victims advocate, but not just victims advocate. You're also you're an advocate for the mon- mon- minorities of the minorities. That's what I would say. Thank you, and that is correct. And I think I my passion is justice, and uh, I am part of the um, Tampa Bay Human Trafficking Task Force in the sense that uh, in Pasco County, I'm part of that legislative voice that wants to um, take the initiative and take the lead for Florida and see how we can, what programs we can develop and what kind of implementation we can develop to help uh, the victims of human trafficking. Now, in America, America is the biggest consumer Mm -hmm. of human trafficking. And for a nation that loves liberty and justice, we have an awful record right now. The United States, I'm surprised to hear that. It is. It is. We are the biggest consumers uh, of human trafficking. And uh, a lot of it, it's labor, labor trafficking. And some of it is, uh, of course, sexual exploitation. And now we're starting to see, unfortunately, another side of human trafficking, which is harvest, um, d- um, organ harvesting of victims. Whoa. Yeah. Now, now we're getting deep now. Yeah, now. yeah, but, you know, that could affect everybody, you know that what could I mean? Be a, that could be a sad song right there. That's right. There could be, you know, so you could be walking down the street one day, a guy thinks you're, they think you're homeless, <laughs> van pulls up, next thing you know, they got your liver, you know? I mean, I mean, it, it happens. It happens. Well, actually, this is how they're doing it. They're t- they, they take children, they're kidnapped children, and they put children in, in cages, like if it were an animal, and they feed it a certain kind of food, and they do do blood works on them and blood panels to see who they're compatible compatible with. So it's actually stuff we see in science fiction, but it's really, it's horror, and it's really going on right now. Now you think, you're still think, saying that United States of America is the number one of human trafficking of you know, more so than these third world countries that are all over Correct, the correct. This is what's going on on in our nation and not only that california is number one texas is number two florida is number three and there's mostly hispanics or we're, we're from all over the world hispanic hispanics um uh, asia uh the, the, the eastern russia they're they're coming from all over the world and within the united states like i said florida is number three and tampa bay is number two behind miami dade wow that's surprising. It's something I wouldn't expect, you know. And it's awful, and it's, it, it tells a sad story about America. Now, what is the cross-section of human trafficking that you've run into, say, in the Tampa Bay area? Has it been prostitution, illegal prostitution, or has it been, like, uh, uh, what are these sweatshops where they make kids work? or what? Mainly I mean, farmer workers, mm-hmm. um, um, construction workers, and uh, restaurant workers, hotel workers. So that's time. Each time there's a, a, a some kind of convention going on, um, the uh, the human trafficking uh, task force is it's uh, on an extra alert because we need to um, not only train uh, the people, the consumers out there, uh, we need to be watchful. As uh, for example, um, you know, Tampa Bay, these. Um, places that we have mentioned before you know these strips and places uh we go in there and we teach the employees what to look for one thing is to do something out of your own will and for your own financial gain and one thing is to have a slave do it right right now i have um, i can tell you i have never been in a gentleman's club to where anybody was uh, forced to work in there i'm sure it happens all over the place but i've been fortunate to go in upscale type places to where you know, I know it's prevalent in New York and in the big cities, Miami and stuff like that. Uh, but Miami, pre- I'm not surprised. Prevalent about. here in Tampa, we're number two, and uh, the stats do not lie. Now, what do, what do you all uh, basically do about it? Well, um, the law enforcement has a piece. Um, they are responsible for enforcing the law. They're infor- uh, responsible these are, for these are federal laws, though, aren't they? 
Um, oh. It's it's a yes, it's a federal project, not only federal um, federal law enforcement, but it's also local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so they have their role to play is to enforce the law to rescue the victims. And then we have the um, a lot of churches and organizations that help with uh, with the healing process. And that's what I want to talk about today okay. about the 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 role of musicians in the healing process of social issues. For example, music is it can be used as a healing tool and it these creative types can write music that will address the condition of the slavery and then uh, put not only not only write the lyrics but uh, write uh, cr come up with the music that's going to bring about deliverance and healing to the soul that has been enslaved for so long for we have many movies that we have seen where the um, musicians were used to bring about change for example um, I, um, Amistad is a movie that where we saw music was a, used as a healing tool. Um, Schindler's List, um, there was right. a violinist player that uh, used his music to get the mm -hmm. enemy to 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 go away or or to uh, you know to uh, not infringe on certain things. Right. Um, I'm not sure how successful they were, but it we learned that music is a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Not only does it he speak psychologically to the person, but it, more importantly, it speaks to the soul. Right, and you go back <coughs> in the days of slavery, even in this country, and you know that uh, music was a big, big factor. Big factor. Oh, it's, uh, it's one mm -hmm. of the only things probably of, of uh, fulfillment of joy uh, to, an, an escape from the life that they had was music. Right. Exactly. And during our time of slavery in America, um, the spirituals were born out of that right. if that slavery, out of that pit. The Gospels, right. The, the Gospels mm -hmm. and bluegrass, some blue right. forms of bluegrass. So it, it's always, it's been in our American history to use music to heal and to deliver. And because we are living in the 21st century, now it's the time again that the responsibility, not the responsibility, but perhaps the call is falling upon musicians to bring music, to bring healing to these people because... Uh, you know, um, America has a history of when we do wrong, we have a tendency to correct it. So, but part of the correction is also healing. So, I I would love to see artists like like John right here write something that will be it, it will go exponentially in the airwaves to bring healing to to these right. people to these victims. Well, you know, the old adage of the music that soothes the savage beast will also heals the hurt soul well too. we've we've actually done a couple of things like that before and if you want to, i'll show it to you you know later after the show where uh me and orlando actually are writing a theme for music for a movie that's called born into pain and um so uh but one thing i wanted to say was you know when you what it was a topic we were talking about a few uh, you know, a little a while back about uh the area not supporting the arts uh, a lot of people don't know that St. Pete, Clearwater, in Tampa, and even up to Sarasota, let's say, say has the, the, the most venues that pay musicians to perform. They don't pay them the right kind of money, but it's the biggest in the United States, that area. So it, it, would, it would seems to me that, it would, you know, especially for tourism, that they should get back, you know, support the arts so we can have actually better, you know, better venues, to, you know, better artists to perform. Because a lot of times they do this stuff and they're just doing, you know, the regular stuff. They're not really rehearsing. They're, a lot of them don't want to because they're not getting paid enough, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's an issue. If we can if we can tie uh, justifying funding uh, with human trafficking with uh, musicians, th then we can find a venue. We can start there as a starting point to a to use it as a healing tool, uh, not only for the human trafficking issues, but also for other social justice concerns, such as, like I mentioned before, the mentally ill, women's rights, uh, and all the other uh, issues that come about in a very complicated and modern society. Right. Now, your lobbying group, is it for, are you going to be lobbying Washington or the state of Florida? Well, I have to start somewhere. Right. I'm exploring that right now as we speak. Um, I will probably end up in two places, and for now, um, I'm getting actually I'm getting ready to go on into Washington D.C. next month in, in October because I, I got to do my finish my my doctorate, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be exploring because this is innovative. I don't think uh, there's a lot of lobbyists that. They advocate for social issues for the un we do have the unborn and the, and, the, and 
uh, lobbyist for the um, human life, and that's awesome because I, 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 I would like to be that. But I think there's other issues brewing, and some of it is uh, religious liberty. And so I'm, I'm either heading for Tallahassee or Washington, D.C. Um, I'm exploring that as I go. Um, my lobbying group, I say that prophetically, is just me and my assistant. Right. But I, I have the hopes that I can bring in other voices and we can unite it and, co- and collaboratively work towards all these issues that will bring healing to as much as we can to America and perhaps the world. Well, you'll just you'll be as effective as any other lobbying group as long as you you have access to the people that uh, makes, pulls the purse strings and uh, makes the laws. That's why I want to unite. Uh, I've been talking to John about uniting. Uh, let's start in Pasco County. Let's unite all the musicians and the local artists, and let's try to, if not a guild, or some kind of association where we can all voice the concerns what we want to see, how we want to see it, and start our own association. And I will go and represent this association, mm-hmm. the Pasco Musicians and Artists Local Association, whatever we come up with the name, and so that we can have uh, strength and power and teeth because without uh, without uh, associating, we, we really are just um, fragments, individual voices. But united, we can become a strong voice, and I can be that one voice for all people. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Now, how can people get in touch with you, and uh, how can people see what you're doing? Do you have a Facebook page or a website? I do have, uh, yes, I do have a Facebook page. It's Minnie Diaz, M-I-N-N-I-E, Diaz, D-I-A-Z. And I also have uh, my former political page that I'm going to be converting to Divine Conservative LLC. You can always call me, uh, 727 Four five nine six one three five. It is my personal number, seven two seven four five nine six one three five, or email me at Chaplain Mini C H A P L A I N Mini M I N N I E at gmail dot com. Chaplain Mini, Captain Mini, Captain Mini, or Chaplain Mini, Captain Mini. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> think I, you know either works you know <laughs> you know okay well you know that's great uh the other thing i, I wanted to tell our audience out there where she's mentioning pasco county and uh, pasco county is is a land of lakes area just north of um, tampa so if anybody in our world audience wants to look at a at a uh, a map and then that'll give you an idea where she's starting her crusade and it's great. I think I think what you're doing is is great, and good luck to you. Thank you very much for giving me time on air, and I hope to be on on air some oh. other time. Oh, we'll we'll have you back, and uh, you know when you come up with uh, with some uh, good look, good stories to tell us about uh, some new initiatives and and some uh, some uh, you know some real rewards that are coming forward from what you're trying to do. You know, even if it. it even if it seems like it's a small step, it's really a big step because without your step, then it, nothing gets done. We got to yeah. make change. Thank yeah. you. We've got to make change. We real change. Real change. <laughs> yeah, real, real change. Not that hopey, changey <laughs> crap. You know what I mean? How'd that work out for you, bud? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we still got to. I stay neutral. I you know. guys get to fight it I, all. I know. I, I, I know. I hate to even get political on this music show because there's so many artists well, it's out there. Part of, it's part of change. Just yeah. are a little bit more liberal than I am. I'm just a little too old fashioned. For that, I know what works and what doesn't work, and I've you know I've seen promises and I've seen doers and a lot of talkers out there. And, but you seem like a doer, Minnie. Thank you, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and she's going to be a big friend of the shows, and we're going to put her stuff up on our WDBF Radio Facebook page. So be looking for that, and uh, we'll move each other's stuff all around there. That's so, how you do it. Yeah. So, John, what else you got? Well, you know, we're talking, you know, this is interesting. This goes back to, to back in the days of Woodstock. You know, it was a beautiful movement going on, right? People were singing about peace and love, and, and then that nothing ever happened. Right. But there's a conspiracy theory, you know, and all of a sudden, ever, ever after that concert happened, music started getting pulled out of the schools. And because music is a, you know, it's a powerful thing, and I think that a lot of times it has to do with why we don't have music in schools all those events that happened back in the days right and i think that uh i think of maybe the government would be not so afraid of the effect of music versus doing it for a positive thing like in world war ii they used artists to win the second world war they were painting tanks and 
you know, they hired, you know, thousands of artists to do that, and it was a positive thing, right? So okay. let's use music for a positive thing. That's right. Think? Let's m- put music back in the schools and get, get the kids off the streets. That's right. what I say. Exactly. I'm in. I'm All in. Right. Minnie Diaz, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right. We'll be back.